So I have some good news. I'm not preaching this morning. So <laughs> I, no, no clapping. Just, just uh, I mean, let's not be over-enthusiastic. Um, this morning we have guest speakers, Philip and Helen Stanley. I've known them for about 20 years. They've been in ministry 61 years. 61 years. Hallelujah. And I met Philip about 20 years ago, and he, he came the first time in our home about, I think about 17 years ago, and that was just when it was just a little Bible study in my home. And, uh, and Philip and Helen have been really a blessing to me. You know, it's wonderful to see someone who walks, has walked with the Lord for so many years. They've walked with the Lord, I mean, longer than I can understand, because I'm only 58. So, I mean... But God has, has, has used them to be an encouragement in my life. And I remember uh, the Lord also uses Philip in, in the prophetic ministry. And I remember it was 1997 that Harvey and I went down to Mexico City to a pastor's conference there. And they were praying for us. And they, Philip had a prophecy over Harvey and I. And we had it recorded. And that was like 17 years ago. He didn't know us. We didn't know him. But things that he prophesied 17 years ago have come about. You know, some of them took years to come about, they came about. And, and, and someone said, listen, that prophecy, go, that's just so amazing. That was God. That was God. And I just, and it's ex- encouraging when, when we know that God is got a plan for our lives. And sometimes it gives us little glimpses of what that plan is. Isn't that exciting? And then we can pray into that plan. So um, we just want to, whatever uh, Philip and Helen have to share that's on their hearts, we just want to be open Hallelujah. There were people who seasoned. He's traveled to Japan and India. They were missionaries in Japan for a number of years. So it's just a real blessing to see how they persevered in, in the midst of all sorts of circumstances. We hope we have enough volume. <clears throat> oh, it's so wonderful to see all of you worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. It's glorious. If there's anything that's a strong point in my life and the Lord has made it it's worship and you're so blessed here to being led in worship did you know the majority of the body of Christ today is not worshiping the Lord they're just going through a lot of entertainment (laughs) and They're missing out on so much. And I don't know whether you realize it or not, but God is doing a special work in this local church. And oh, don't let anything hinder you from moving forward in what God is doing because he's about to break forth in ways that you've never known in your whole life. Praise the Lord. The Lord is here. Praise God. My wife is going to be sharing second today. The Lord led this way for me to be first and her to be second. I don't know what all the Lord has planned. But his plan is the best. And we're so thankful for the fathers that are seeking to lead their families to serve the Lord. (coughs) And as I considered this message that the Lord has given me, which is short, I believe it's probably more for the fathers than anybody else. But it's for all of us. And, you know, sometimes people hesitate to talk about finances. But, you know, we need to be well acquainted with our provider. We've been warned in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, that they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have pierced themselves through 
What does it say? They have erred from the faith. They pierce themselves through with many sorrows. That's not what God has for us. God has something that's wonderful in the way of finances. And his desire for his children today is to supply our every need. My wife and I have been trusting the Lord for 62 years for our finances and the Lord has supplied. He has never failed. And let me say, God is not just talking to those who are called in the five ministry offices, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, or just those that are elders and deacons, local church government. Hallelujah. His provision is for every one of his children. And so God wants us not to forget about what we're told in Hebrews 4.12, we're to come to the throne of grace with boldness, with confidence that God loves us and he wants to give to us even money, the money we need to live here in this world. I was raised in poverty. I knew poverty until I was grown more or less. And then when my wife and I married, we were in poverty. But God began to cause me to understand that he wanted to supply my every need. Philippians 4.19 said, My God, now take this personally, everyone, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our God is not a poor God. <laughs> you know, it's funny the way we are in our natural reasoning. When the Lord was teaching me the life of faith, I hesitated to ask for any meat very much, just a tiny meat, because I was acting like God was a poor God, like he didn't have anything. And so God rebuked me. He said, if you want more meat, pray for more meat. So I prayed for more meat, and we got more meat. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, it's wonderful to realize that he's not going to let us enter in to finances through our own self-effort in the way of the world because that's the way of sorrow and dis disappointment and failure. But he's going to help us to have our needs supplied by Jesus Christ, our Savior. Did you know that Jesus went to the cross for us? But before he went to the cross, he was in the process of making provision for us financially. Are you familiar with Luke chapter 9 and verse 58? And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. Before Jesus went to the cross, he was in the process of tasting our poverty, the deepest poverty that anyone in this world can know. I think of some of the poverty sometime just in the country of India. 45% of the people only eat one meal a day. Oh, we're such a blessed people to eat three meals a day. Beside that, there's millions that are starving. But 
God's plan is for our every need to be supplied. And what does he tell us in Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8? He said, the silver and gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Need some silver and gold? Well, it belongs to the Lord, the ruler of the universe, our Savior, our Lord. Hallelujah. He said, the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. I'm a little crazy to even talk this way. But you know in India right now what's needed. They need about two and a half million dollars. Praise God. I can't provide it. I can't provide even a million. <laughs> I can provide very little. But the Lord said the silver and gold is mine, so I'm believing the Lord will provide. Praise God. You know, when I first started <coughs> trusting the Lord, I just got a little bit. So when you first trust the Lord for your finances, don't be disturbed if you just get a little bit. Because we have to learn to trust. We have to learn to believe. We have to learn to stand on the promises. We have to steadfastly claim the provision of the Lord. But as I steadfastly claimed the provision of the Lord, it increased and got more and more until our every need was supplied. Praise God. That's what he has for you. Hallelujah. Well, I need to give my wife time. I don't know just how much farther to go. Except I want to say there is a requirement for receiving finances from the Lord. And that is we need to be a child of God. And Jesus has already made the provision for everyone born into this world so you can be a child of God for all eternity. He paid the price with his precious blood. Hallelujah. So you can have spiritual life, eternal life. You can have physical healing for your body. You can have finances. You can have every need supplied. But we only enter into that as we open our hearts and lives to receive him as Savior and Lord. I, I just feel like I'm a blessed person. I feel like I'm almost a special person. I was saved when I was seven years old and I didn't ever backslide. Most of the stories, most of the stories you hear, the people backslide a few times possibly. But our God makes us his children and he's able to keep us steadfastly serving the Lord with all of our heart all the days of our life. I think some of you know how old I am now. 87 years old is how old I am now. Yeah. Praise God. And I'm so glad I can serve the Lord with all my heart when I'm 87 years old. And I can do His will because that's an important part, not only becoming God's child, Receive him as Savior and Lord of our life. But doing his will every day is an important thing in receiving finances. Praise God. And just think, 
He's provided the leadership of the Holy Spirit, first of all, the gift of the Holy Spirit, then the leadership of the Holy Spirit for every one of us. And in His will, we're going to find He's going to be supplying our every need. Yes. Praise God. Well, I, of course, would like to keep on talking, but... You know, there's a reason why my wife is speaking today. And there's a reason why she's speaking right now after me. Praise God. So it's good to do God's will. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together and running over. So he has a wonderful law. We just give out of our heart and he's such always an abundant God. Uh, I have a PowerPoint, I think, so I'd appreciate it. But today's Father's Day. And we're so thankful for every single father. You know, it's such a blessing to be a father, I don't know what it's like, but I'm a mother. <laughs> but, you know, God gives children, and it's, it's such a wonder, well, all you had to do was look at Howard's face this morning <laughs> when his grandson was there. Daughter, daughter. Gra I'm sorry, <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> but anyway, you know, the birth of a child is a wonderful occasion. And I know that there's some men who don't have that privilege of being a natural father, but God has the privilege of us, of everyone, every man being a father and every woman being a mother, because we have the opportunity to have spiritual children. And in the Bible, it says the children of the barren are more than the children of those that bear natural children if we give our lives to God. So we can all enjoy the privileges of being fathers and mothers. But there are some people in this world, I've heard so many people talk, giving their testimony about how they were forsaken as a child. Their father was never around and they spent their whole life also searching for their father's love because some fathers just don't know how to give love. They don't affirm their child, they push them down. And so that child is always struggling and striving to be a good child just so their father will love them. But we have a father who always loves us. He never pushes us down. If we do something wrong, he lets us know. But it's for our good, because he wants us to grow up into good children. So I want to speak to you a little bit about God's love. He loves, he, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ came to this world to give us eternal life because of the love of the Father and because of his love for us. When we went to Japan, we spent some years there, the first thing our interpreter did there was make a great big, I mean a big sign, <laughs> big Japanese letters saying, God is love. That was in our living room. Well, I was told by one of our interpreters, the Japanese people don't understand love. Well, I don't think any of us understand love until we know the love of God. It's, it's God's love. It's always there. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What better God, what better father can we have than that? 
And if you don't know God as your Father, if you don't haven't accepted Jesus Christ today, I hope you will learn of his love. Because, the next please, Jesus Christ left his heavenly home. He was in a home where he was surrounded by angels. There was no sorrow. There was no sin. Everything was perfect. And he didn't have to come. He could have just stayed up there and enjoyed everything for himself. But the Bible says he wanted many children. And so the Bible also says that when a sinner comes to Jesus, that the angels of heaven rejoice. I, I was just thinking this morning, as I mentioned before, about the child being born. I was just thinking, you know, it is, everybody's so happy when a child's going to be born. Oh, they're just waiting. We had twins born to our grandson last December, and I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. I was so excited to see these children born. God, there's angels. There's such rejoicing in heaven when one child comes to Jesus. So, Jesus, it says the next slide, please. He, he measured. He, he was in, uh, with his father at creation. And it says he measured the oceans in the hollow of his hand. It says that he weighed the mountains. You know Mount Logan? <laughs> God took a little bit of dust and measured it. And then Mount Elias, is it? He said, that one doesn't need quite as much dirt. We'll make it a little shorter. But just think. I mean, God created the mountains, the rivers. It says he spread out the heavens as a curtain, the great God, the beautiful sky, the sunrises, the sunsets, everything he made. And it says we're just as grasshoppers in his sight. Well, actually, I'd like to look at the next verse. A friend of Job asked him a question. He was talking to Job, and he said, how then can a man be righteous before God? If the stars are not pure in his sight, how much less man who is a, a what? A maggot? <laughs> this is the New King James Version, but it agrees with the Hebrew, <laughs> a maggot. Okay, D just go back. Let's look at the maggots a minute, please. <laughs> now, just think, all of us, before we accepted Jesus. How do you like that picture of yourself? <laughs> just before, in... In Oregon, we have, in Portland, we have recycling. And so they give us this little container to set on our cabinets in the kitchen, on our countertops, and, and it has a lid on it, and you put your scraps in there. So I have one on our countertop. And I was just getting ready to uh, finish up before we left on this trip, you know, put my last scraps in there and then throw it away, and I lifted the lid, and <gasps> I closed it immediately. And I did have some scraps to put in it, but I didn't want to lift the lid again, but finally I did really quickly and down again. Because when I opened the lid, it was crawling with maggots. It looked terrible. <laughs> it was a frightening sight to me because maggots love decayed things. They just love trash. And I took it out and I emptied it and some of the maggots fell out on the ground so I tried to kill them. They didn't want to die. I just squashed and squashed until finally I got them all dead. Well, you know what a maggot becomes? 
a fly. <laughs> well, that's not much prettier, is it? <laughs> what do you want to do when you see a fly? Where's the fly swatter? <laughs> and they, dis they spread disease. That's why we don't want to kill them. You know, before we know Jesus as our Savior, we may think we're just being as good as we can be, but we're not. Goodness comes from God. Of course, people, people do wonderful things, but we're still flies. <laughs> we still have that sinful nature, but God has something better for us. In Job 25, the rest of that verse we read was how much less man who is a maggot and the son of man who is a worm. The son of man it refers, Jesus was called the son of man because he left heaven and came to earth to save us from our sins. And he says, he's a worm. And Psalm 26, verse, uh, Psalm 22, verse 6 is a prophetic psalm about the crucifixion of Jesus. It talks about I was pierced and how people made fun of him. And he said, I am a worm and no man. This is a special word, and it means a certain insect. And I'd like to, the next one, this I searched for several years because I, I was, what does that insect look like? And finally I found a picture. This is a coccus, illicus, and the, this is a picture of the female. The male flies around, but the female doesn't. She gets pregnant. And when she gets pregnant, she fastens herself to a tree and she never leaves that tree. She gives birth to thousands of little eggs and she, she dies, she bursts open and that red secretion that is within her covers her eggs. And this is a wonderful picture of Jesus. He came to earth for you and for me. He fastened himself. The Bible says he willingly gave himself. He fastened himself to the cross. And the reason Hebrews 2 tells us that he became a man and he suffered because he wanted to bring many sons into glory. So Jesus died on the cross. The wonderful thing about him is he rose again from the dead and he's alive. But this insect dies. And when that insect dies and that red secretion goes out over the eggs and over the tree, that in the days of old, even until the 19th century, that dye was a very precious dye. It was very expensive. It was how you dyed the crimson, the scarlet. And the blood of Jesus Christ is so precious. It says, we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The next one, please. This, the, the color's a little different, but that's sort of the color. Uh, he says, come now, let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And the next picture shows... Uh, Jewish scientist with his glass of water and inside that is one, one of those insects. And it has made this beautiful color in that glass. So we are like worms. This, not, this is not a maggot. <laughs> this is a caterpillar. And usually when I see a caterpillar crawling around, I want to kill it too. 
I, they're not my favorite creature. But if we will be like that caterpillar, if we can realize that we are sinners, that we need salvation, we need the grace of God, if we will come to the tree, if we will come to the cross, if we will say, yes, I give my life to you, I want you to forgive me of my sins, I want you to come into my heart and save me, we'll be changed. The Bible says old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. When I was 13 years old, I asked Jesus Christ in my heart. And that day, it felt like a heavy weight of sin had been lifted off of me. And I have a, received a peace that I have never lost. The birds sang sweeter that day and the flowers <laughs> were more beautiful. I was a new person. I was changed. Everyone has different experiences. Some don't feel any special thing. But when we come to Jesus, he says, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. You know, the fly flies around doing bad things, but the butterfly, nobody wants to kill a butterfly. The butterfly brings us joy. And, you know, there's so many different butterflies. They're not all the same. Flies look a lot the same, don't they? But the butterflies, God has a special place for each one of us, a special ministry that we can give joy, peace to the world, to those lost in sin. So God wants to make us butterflies. He wants us to go and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So next, please. Even though we ask Jesus to come into our heart and forgive us of our sins, we still need to realize that without him, we can do nothing. And sometimes we just try to do everything ourselves. We get worried and fearful and we, we don't know where our finances are coming from. We don't know who's going to solve the problem because it's too big for us. And I, I have this illustration that years ago. The Bible says if we cast all of our care on him, he will care for us. That means he wants to take your burden. He wants to answer the prayer for you. So I saw this picture years ago of a, a little ant trying so hard. And I just think... If a man, the man is Jesus Christ. <laughs> but if you saw an ant crawling down and you went to that little ant and you said, where do you want to take this? Oh, I'm trying to get it over there to the Kleenex box. <laughs> but I can't, it's just too heavy for me. Would you like for me to help you, little ant? And you take it and whoop. Dum, dum. And then what happens to the ant? Next one, please. He's going to take all of our care because he cares for us. He's given his angels as ministering spirits to his children. He knows how to meet every need. He gives us peace in spite of the storm, in spite of the problems. But when, next one, please. <laughs> When the ant doesn't have that burden anymore, wow, he can just say, praise God, this is wonderful. I am free. Yes, the next one, free in Jesus. God wants us to be free. He took our burden for us. But sometimes we just hold on to those problems, you know, just have to work this out some way. I don't know how I'm ever going to get out of this problem. Give it to Jesus. He wants to take care of it. You might not see a change right away, but you'll have peace. You'll have rest. And he'll work things out in his time. And so what I want us to really remember from the, today is God is love. He loves you. 
You are made for a purpose. You know, Jesus is calling you. He wants you to come to him. If you don't know Jesus as your savior, you're here for a purpose today. That means he's calling you. He loves you. He gave his life for you. Maybe you've known Jesus, but you've strayed away. In the Bible, there's a story of a son who went away from home. He took his father's goods. He took his inheritance. He wasted it all. He just lived however he wanted to. And then he finally decided, well, I think I'll go back home and see if I can be a servant because I'm starving out here. I'm not, I can't be a son because I've, it's, there's no hope for me now. I've already done these terrible things. But maybe, maybe my father will hire me back as a servant. The father, as the son started home, the father He'd always been looking for his son every day, waiting for him, hoping he would come back. As soon as the father saw the son, he ran to him, and he said, bring, bring a ring, bring the robe, kill the catted fat, uh, <laughs> fatted <laughs> calf. We're going to have a party tonight, a celebration. You're not too far from God. If you've strayed away, he's calling you today. I'm going to turn this over to Howard. Helen, thank you very much. Somebody said to me, I need to spruce up my PowerPoint now after this. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. But, but as Helen was sharing, and... and and she shared about, you know, the maggots, you know, and, and she shared this last night that maggots eat garbage. And before we came to Christ, we were eating garbage. We didn't realize it was garbage, but we were eating garbage. And then she, she talked about flies. Maggots turn into flies. And flies are the yuckiest, are the yuckiest. I remember one time I was in Ukraine. It was in 1994, and we were in a home. And I remembered when I was there, I, I just looked around and, and thought, you know, where's the bathroom? He goes, well, it's, it's outside. It was an outside bathroom. And I remember going and using that bathroom, and it was the worst thing because I'd sit in that outhouse, and flies would come out of that outhouse hole <laughs> and land on me. And, and I knew where they were from. I knew what they were eating. I knew what they were walking on. And I go, this is so bad that I don't want to go to the bathroom again until I leave Ukraine. <laughs> But that's like us before we knew the Lord. You know, I thought I was a nice person. You know, I, I, but really, I was eating garbage, and in my heart was foul. I knew it looked nice outside, but inside my heart was foul. And at one time, I was a skeptic, and I used to think people who believed in God and believed in Jesus, they were just, just uh, delusionary. It was just a story. But at 20 years old, I came to a faith in Jesus Christ. And I remember the day I received him when I just said, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I knew all of a sudden that Jesus was, the, was, was truly the Son of God. That God came down in his son Jesus and died for my sins and rose from the dead. I just knew it was true. It wasn't like somebody convinced me or tried to brainwash me. It's like all of a sudden in my heart, I knew it was true. In fact, there was a number of months well, I knew it was true, but I kept resisting. I wanted to do things my way. I thought I was pretty good. I thought I knew it would make me happy. But I came to that day, it was in August, and I remember realized that I really was a sinner, that I was really selfish. I was really a maggot. I was really one who was gonna destroy my life and hurt others in the process. And that's when I turned to the Lord and I prayed. And I just said, Lord, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. And I just confess 
my sins. I confess my sinfulness. And I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you to come in within my heart that I may be a child of God and that my life may be dedicated for your glory, that you would save me even now. And I remember when I prayed that prayer and all of a sudden that huge burden of sins came off. And I remember I smiled for three days straight. I was so happy. I was so happy. And that was 37 years ago. And I don't regret one day, not one day, that I made that decision. And I look at my friends that were in school. I wasn't the smartest. I sure wasn't the best looking. Um, and, but I look back now, maybe they've, they've accomplished much more than me in the natural. But you know something, I look at my life. It's not destroyed. It would have been destroyed. The Lord has given me a wonderful wife and family. I know that's God's grace. I know that's God's grace. But even more than all the blessings that he's given me on this earth is I've got eternal life. As I get older and as I age, I know what awaits me. It's eternity. It's eternity with Jesus and with all of you who have received Jesus. So you're stuck with me. And so we're going to just have a, a one worship song. And then afterwards, we're going to have a, an opportunity for those. First of all, I don't want, I'm not trying to manipulate you into, okay, I'll say this prayer. If you don't really believe this is truth, then a prayer is not going to do anything. But if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you this morning, if he's speaking to you, you know, yes, there's something about this. This is true. I believe this. Then God is saying, respond. But if you're not sure, then do what I did. I began to pray. I began to say, God, are you really there? Is this real? I even began to read the Bible. As a Jewish boy, almost, it was almost like a covert operation at home. I had my own Bible. My dad didn't know it. And I began just to read the New Testament. And as I did, then that's when faith grew. But it was that day, about a few months later, that I put my faith in Jesus. There's also some here that are not walking with God, that there's sin in your lives, that you're not doing what God would want, and it sows destruction in your lives. I love what Ken Raymer said a number of months ago. God's word is not restrictive, it's protective. God's word is not restrictive, it is protective. And if you have sin in your life, and if you're walking in sin as a believer, it will destroy your life. It will destroy you, and it will not get better, it'll get worse. It'll get worse. But I love what Helen said, that God is here to set you right. He wants you to walk in freedom. He doesn't want your lives to be destroyed. I've seen believers walk in destruction, and 30 years later, their lives are a mess and chaotic. But today is a day to say, God, I want to straighten up my life. I want to make the first step. So we're going to just have a, an opportunity to spend just the song. We're going to worship the Lord. And after that, we're going to have the altar team come up. And I'll just call those who have in their heart. First of all, if you want to receive Christ, we're happy to pray with you. If, you're, if there's sin in your life that you've been embracing, and you want to say, I want to get my life right, we're here to pray for you too. If you're walking with God, but you're struggling, we're here to pray for you too. And if you're here and you're thankful for what God is doing, you want to share that with somebody, you can come forward and say, yes, let's pray and give thanks together. See, to pray isn't just when we're in trouble. It's also to be thankful.